Imagine you're swimming a casual 4,000 feet below the waves in the inky blackness of the bathypelagic zone, when you come across a pair of what seems to be headlights. Is it a car? Is it a plane? Nope, it's a squid with its brights on. The Dana octopus squid is a shiny fellow and isn't afraid to let that light shine before men that they may see his squid deeds. But when you live where the sun don't shine, you need a light to survive here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons. To uh, Jess Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, uh, Richard Kaspar, Lottie and Aubrey, Gray Hughes and Wednesday Rabbit. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a rising star in the sea, but more on that later. A rising or maybe sinking or falling star. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about how weird it is that people call it a meteoric rise? Meteors don't rise. Yeah, that's so interesting. It's like they, that's the, all they do is fall. (laughs) 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 Um, interesting, yes. Um, I, I, a, a, a rocket rise, a rocketic, if there's an adjective for that. But, yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about? The term meteoric refers to speed, not direction. <laughs> you don't say. There are other fast things that don't exclusively fall <laughs> <laughs> that you could use as your metaphor. It is It is a little... It's I that that's ironic, right there. Mm-hmm. That is that is a that might even be the purest one of the one of the purest uh, forms of irony I can think of. Some meteoric rise, like sleeping like a baby. <laughs> yeah, sleep like the dead is a, is a better phrase. That means the same thing, but it's way more macabre and less. Adorable. Or sleep like a log. <laughs> Which is yeah, dead. Logs aren't waking up. <laughs> De- logs are pretty dead. <laughs> anyway. Would you like to know what we're, t- we're talking about? I would. Did we even say? The no, Dana? we haven't. Dana Boomers. <laughs> it's the Dana Squid Octopus. <laughs> the word boomers has been so uh, just dragged through the mud these last yeah. like f- five years or whatever that when you said it, I f- did not even think of like the fun zone. The fun place for, <laughs> for the whole family. I was like, what? There's is, Does Dania have like a large boomer population? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Not anymore. I I think Dania like used to have a boomers and doesn't anymore. Oh, does it not? Now there's just the one in Boca. I pass anyway, it every day. It's not even Dania. It's the Dana or Dana. I know. I know. Dana. Yeah, we're gonna uh, squid. The D O S. The the DOS. Um, is it the Dana octopus squid or the Dana squid octopus? Octopus squid, because it is a squid, not an octopus. The, the octopus describes matters. the squid. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, uh, it's a. It's a. I was arguing with a Canadian over. Um, you never do that. <laughs> adjective use, and I'm like, and he was like, "You, you, you guys don't speak English. We speak English in Canada." I'm like, uh, I'm right. <laughs> This, that what what it was a, a situation where like a noun was being used as an adjective, and the he was say, saying that no the noun, the adjective should have an apostrophe s. But it, I was he didn't understand that it was an adjective. It wasn't the noun. It's like no no no. 
Never mind. Maybe you're just using some Gen Z talk on him. You were just adulting or something like that. No, I was 100% right. I wish I remembered exactly the um, the phrase, but I can't remember. Just um, never argue with Canadians. I think that's for the takeaway from this. Usually you don't have to. They're very congenial. <laughs> yeah, usually it's not a problem. Um, anyway, this is called the Dana Octopus Squid. We're, we're going to call it here um, Led Zeppelin or LED Zeppelin. This looked a lot better when I wrote it down and I didn't <laughs> just realize that it was a lot harder to communicate uh, with my voice. But Led Zeppelin, but also LED. So that it does work okay. that way too. Um, squillant tentacles and a lady with lights. <laughs> Okay. That one's a baby one. She she came out with that one. She's pretty. I like pretty it. Good. Do you want to know what it looks like, or do you have like some sort of game we could play? Uh, we gotta taxonomize me, Captain, first. Oh, that's right. We haven't even done that. Well, it's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom, Animalia. It's in the phylum Mollusca, cause it's a snail. Just kidding. It's akin <laughs> to snail. Um, it's, it's the class Cephalopoda. Foothead. Head foot. Head foot. Headwig. The order is... Oh, hey. go today. Oi, gopsidae. <laughs> oh, hey. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oi. Um, oh, hey, gopsida. The family is... Oh, hey, oh, The family is Octopotuthidae. Yeah. Or is it like Europe? Octopi Europe today. No, because no, it's no the T. Octopi U today. Oct- but the how you, 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 Yeah, you got to put that T in there. Octopo two today. Yeah, there you go. Tooth. Um. And then the genus is Tangia or Tani Tanin Taningia. Taninga. Taningia. Yeah, okay, if you want to hit the hard G. Yeah, like an Aninga. Uh, Anhinga. Anhinga, yeah. Uh, th- the species is Danny. <laughs> oh, Danae. Danny boy. The pipes, uh, the pipes. Taningia Danae. Taninga Danae? That sounds like a character from Boy Meets World. Taningia Danae. It could be a ninja. Uh, there's no other I there, so I don't think it would be Ninja. What? Taninga. Ninja. No, there's an I. Oh, am I Teninja. looking? Ninja. Did I write it down wrong on my notes? Then okay, then there's Taninja. I would say Taninja then. Yeah, if there's an I. Um, this is everyone's favorite part, by the way. Us like <laughs> ruminating on the pronunciation of these words. <laughs> this is called life, death, and taxonomy, not life, death, and fun. <laughs> life life death and saying words correctly the first time ever um, um but it says we're in the business of naming things it's time for my favorite part of the show critter groups the part of the show where i ask you joe a question and that question is the same every time what is the name of a group of this animal or what is the term of entry or what is the collective noun if you saw a group of squid I don't know if we've done this one. Because I think we've done three squid in this entire show. The Humboldt squid, which was episode numero uno. Um, don't go watch it or listen to it. Start start somewhere else, <laughs> please. Um, and uh, the giant squid, which we did... Uh, not too long ago. So I don't know if we did critter groups for that, but we'll see. Uh, if you saw a group of squid, would you call it A, a shoal of squid, B, a spear of squid, C, a squad of squid, or D, a shrill of squid? A shoal of squid, a squad of squid. I hope it's squad. I think it's shoal. Final answer, shoal. That's correct. Ding, ding, ding. 
Yeah, the fish people don't really care about like doing new stuff. And it's not even fish. Better. It's not even and a fish. Ge guess what? I think they're right. You, ha <laughs> you don't need a million groups of nap. You don't even need one. You need group. That's all you need. It's a group of this thing. It doesn't make it faster to say it is a shoal of this thing. Because you still need to say shoal of this thing. It's Unless not about being fast. So it's about attuned. being specific. So you, sh You're specific when you say the thing. So like a murder can interact with a parliament. Yeah, but nobody ever but says a group that. They that, always but, say a murder of crows and a parliament of owls. But then, the, but then one, the, you start there, and then you go on speaking about the crows, and you said one murder was over here, another murder was over there, and those murders were interacting. Uh, but then there, a parliament came in and slapped then, all the murders. How would you stop somebody from beating you up <laughs> <laughs> for your insolence? How, how would you? How would you at that point keep all of your teeth in your mouth? Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking of like a a, a research paper that would have to use the term of venery. But I wish it was squad of squid. I wish it was a square squad of squishy squid. Then they would be saying cohort. Cohort. If it's a research paper. Um but Yeah, it's a shoal it. of squid. I love fish people. I love uh You love the what um they called ornithopters. <laughs> I thought I, th I think isn't that the name of the flying machine in Dune? Dune. Yeah. Um the fish uh, people from H the um town of uh the the town of Innsmouth, H B Lovecraft. Those are fish is that people. What they're called there? Well, I, they're not called fish people, but they are fish people. Got it. Anyway, Let's talk about what it looks like. Sure. Uh, the body coloration is not well documented, so sorry. Sorry about that. Gross. <laughs> but they are like fish people. Deep strike again. Deep sea adapted coloration, which is generally darker to blend in with the deep ocean. That sounds like conjecture. Their arms are equipped with hooks. Almost like a cat's claws, which are around their suckers, and they use it to grasp prey. So if you you could, it's like it's it's dual two factor authentication. I'm gonna <laughs> grip with the suction cup and the claw. Um, authentic, uh, not not authenticity. It's a uh, redundancy. It's two factor uh, because authentication. Because of the deep sea. <laughs> because of their deep sea habitat, sightings and detailed descriptions of their appearance are rare. But most of our knowledge comes from specimens that have been washed ashore or captured in deep sea expeditions, and I assume dredged up from deep sea like nets. There seems to be a picture on Wikipedia in which there is a it's a red it's red like a Humboldt. Or it's a, like a, a vampire squid. A, I, I see a lot of like there. This this recently came up in the news, so it's interesting because um, this I I put this on the um, the radar after uh, on our list um, after just looking up like cool and interesting animals, um, but then a month ago it ca it became topical because um, I started getting all of these. Um, articles on my on my Google News feed that this crazy squid had attacked a camera, and um, it had an interesting feature that we'll talk about later. Oh. But um, now that it's it's there's a Newsweek article that I'm looking at right now where it's like this the the Dana octopus squid came and attacked this camera, and it's interesting because there's we just don't have a lot of documentation of a living specimen, kind of like a a giant squid. Um, so it's like, oh, we got a really good picture and video of this. 
So we're that's how hmm. we're topical here. It's cutting edge of news. Four four weeks old. Yeah. That's it. Last time we did Father's Day, and this time we're doing uh, topical news. Yep, we only do animals that are in the news. So that brings us to its size and dimensions and relatable terms. Welcome to the beloved The Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions and relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced, introduced by you when you send an audio over yourself saying singing or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. I have to do my like vocal exercises before doing that. Yeah, um, you, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the articulatory tools. <laughs> yeah. The, but um, we, it's election year. It's an election year in, in the United States of America. We should do an election for this again. But I think it should only take place in like an email or on Patreon. So it's real. The real deal, people. Just send in your like favorite, whether you like critter groups. I should uh, critter groups and um, nitty gritty nomenclature. nomenclature are a package deal. That it's like a Romney McCain situation. <laughs> it's a uh, it's in that they're like a package deal that loses. <laughs> oh oh i thought it was like bundling your home and auto insurance <laughs> um but um critter groups or measure up send it in via email should we make it so that the patrons count as two if you go on patreon you your vote counts as two because you can sign up for free, you don't have to. You don't have to pay any money, but you can become a, a member, a taxonomy titan, um, for free, and your vote counts as two. Sure, I believe in the system. Yeah, yeah. Recently, I've been uh, f- no. feeling very vindicated and justified by certain individuals that have voiced their love for critter groups. That's so, true. I'm um, feeling confident about this but, one. But uh, before we we don't have a new measure of intro this week, but that means we get to hear from uh, we get to hear from or slash about an animal, and Carlos is to guess what it is. About. But f- without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Nice. I had to make sure we get to the octopus part before we played too much so that the YouTube would destroy us. The YouTube would say, no, no, no. It's a band, I think. You don't know this? No. You're being coy. No, I don't know this. You don't know this song? No. Is that bad? Octopus's Garden? Yeah, that's really weird. I feel like what, we've talked about it. That is that that sound. If you had told me like Octopus's Garden, I would have been like, "Oh, that's probably a new Owl City song." Like, oh, no, that's like Alligator Sky song. or Helicopter Moon or whatever. No, that's Ringo singing. Beatles. Uh, is it just? Octopus's oh, Garden. is it just this, like solo stuff? No, no, it's a Beatles song. It's on Abbey Road. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. One of the most uh, famous albums of all time, and I uh, don't know. Now, all if the you hear about. it, you're not going to hear Paul or jo- uh, Paul or um, Lennon. So you might not associate it with your typical Beatles song because it's Ringo singing. Um, but yeah, it's a Beatles song. Uh, but it's I, the same I was- voice as Yellow Submarine. I was a little distracted by how um, skillful the guitar was. Um, just not the, used the to hearing the guitar is great. I'm not used to hearing that from the Beatles. It's usually pretty straightforward and 
simple. You're thinking of the like 1990. I mean, 1964 uh, albums. Like uh, once they're getting no, into like, Rhodes, well, I'm like I'm looking at the stuff. I'm looking at the track list. Come together is really simple. Here comes the sun is really simple. Um, I don't know most of these. Goodness. Yeah, Sun King. Abbey Road is Oh like, Darling something because Mean Mr. I think Mustard. This is my favorite album. My favorite Beatles album, rather. Golden Slumbers. Yeah, I have never heard of any of these most of these songs. The last like five are like short and they run into each other. It's like almost like sound it sounds like one song. So you really like people don't really play them by themselves. Yeah, I've never yeah, this is not an album I am very familiar with whatsoever. <laughs> You're really probably familiar with the album art. Yeah, of course. I oh, it's, it's like the most famous album of all time. Um for some reason I don't understand it. It's um, very basic. I think it's only famous because people go to where it, where it was photographed. Yeah, it's photographed in a very specific place. The Beatles are eternal superstars. So, but let's talk about an animal for a bit. Um, there's a there. We're doing the new style of uh, measure up where it's a multiple choice. Which um, Joy, longtime listener and friend and helpful person when I'm having audio issues. Cause she knows audio stuff. <laughs> um, uh, she said that like, this is helpful in like chew. Cause it's easier to like play along when you're at home than to like sit there and do math in your head. Cause it's multiple choice and you can like, just think like how many lemon trees would this f- fish would it take to, to be this fish's living depth. Yeah, it turns out like no one really wants to do math in their head or math in general. <laughs> no one just just no one likes math. It's there are there's a few and unhappy few. <laughs> we math. unhappy few. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Dana squid. Their length. Their total length. The Dana squid is the same length as 654 fingernails stacked. Ugh. So the thickness of a fingernail stacked. Or one Peter Mayhew. B, one Peter Mayhew. Do you know who that is? Did you say who, who um, what it is? How tall it, how long it is? Oh, that's right. It's 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet. Yeah, Peter Mayhew is Chewbacca, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or C, one 309,000th the length of Tennessee, east to west. <laughs> Seven foot what? Seven foot five. Or 7.5, 7. so seven seven six. All right, I'm going with Peter Mayhew. I hope Final it's that. Final answer? Yeah. The correct, an- the correct answer is one three hundred and nine uh. thousandth of the length of Tennessee. Um, <laughs> Peter Mayhew is 7'2". Oh, he's, he's, he's a little one. He's a little boy. <laughs> Four inches shy <clears throat> of uh, this squid. I'm just pic- I'm just like imagining the pictures of just Han and Chewie and with Han coming up to like Chewie's chest and I was like that's got to be like a it foot was, and a half. Um, it, it was a cruel multiple choice. I'll give you that because it's easy to conceptualize a Peter Mayhew and it's very difficult to conceptualize th- one three hundred and ninety nine nine thousandth. I can't even say it. It's so hard to conceptualize. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't even remember the first one, so you just got me at at, at, at a Mayhew. 
fingernails. Yeah, definitely not the fingernails. Six hundred of those. There's no way that that goes up to um seven feet. The let's talk weight. Um, they're one hundred and sixty one point four kilograms, or three hundred and five, three hundred and fifty six pounds. So the Dana Squid is the same as A, a Honda Golden Wing Touring Motorcycle, B, one-seventh the largest pig, or C, 15 six-month-old boxer puppies. (laughs) One-seventh times seven. So uh, the largest pig being 2,500 pounds. I don't think that's it. 15 boxer puppies. No, sorry. Not one seventh. Like the largest pig is one seventh. This, this one might be just fake. The largest pig is one seventh of 356 pounds. If either one is one seventh of the other one, it's (laughs) incorrect. I typed in, what's the largest big ever? And it said the blue whale. The blue <laughs> whale is the largest big. It's, it, that has the it's most so big. big. It's the largest big. It's got, that is the, be- that is the best and most big. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one seventh the largest pig. That's what I have. So yeah, it's 2,500 pounds for the largest pig. Um, I don't think it's boxer puppies. So I'm going with number one, whatever it was. A Honda it, Golden Wing Touring Motorcycle? That one, the motorcycle. I'm pretty sure that that uh, final answer. Yes. The Golden Wing Motorcycle is close, but I think it's only 200 and something pounds. The correct answer is one seventh the largest pig. The largest pig is. I gaslit myself and th- thought. That's impossible. Ton. (laughs) Big Bill. The largest pig ever is Big Bill. And he weighed 2,500, 2,552 pounds or 1,100 kilograms. Yeesh. 1933. That. He shattered records. They don't make, they don't make them like that anymore. (laughs) He must have been the size of a horse. No, he would have been the size of like, he could have been Are the size of like, um, any images of this pol- thing. Big Uh-oh. bill. Let's see. Yeah. There's Big a picture. Bill. There's nothing by comparison. I guess pigs are so are really dense. Yeah. There's a picture of him, but he's like alone uh, against a fence. There's a picture of him next to he, like he a, it looks like just a big goat. Pig. Yeah, he just look like you're just very dense. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, they are dense. And I mean, um, delicious. I mean, dense. The, there's pictures of them of just pigs I'm seeing, very large pigs that are um bigger than like taller at the withers than any dog. Oh yeah. And uh, I just like didn't think they'd be as much thicker. as uh, as like a cow which is kind of which is the region which is like the 2500 to 3000 pound region I don't even think cows tend to get that big I, anyway I'm seeing pictures that could be photoshopped but uh, like a lot of them that were like people are with them and they are like kind of their body is a cow's size but their legs are shorter. Yeah, they're Pigs? they're just cows without knees. <laughs> That's it. Sounds like a some sort of activist group. <laughs> cows without it knees. It sounds like a scholastic book fair book. My um, life is a cow but, without knees. Yeah. So fact. The heaviest pig ever recorded was Bill Bit Big Bill, a Poland China hog. From Tennessee. Big Bill weighed an astonishing two, two yeah, I already said the weight, 2,500 pounds, and was recognized by Guinness 
uh, for his size in the 30s, I guess. How long? Is, how old is Guinness? I thought he was recognized for his contribution to uh, the science the, and ending the food shortages in Tennessee. Yeah, <laughs> he the single single bodied uh, single bodiedly ended the d- depression. Yeah, he bodied the depression. That's a that's a term we use these days. Anyway, what? oh, I guess that's it's a- retroactive. Because the Guinness Book of World Records started in the 50s. Cheater. But but how can they verify retroactively? Whatever. I guess they have good records. Um, would you like to hear some fast facts about the Dana Squid? Yeah. Before we get into the major back? Uh, the Dana Squid is an ocean creature. That's a fast fact. If I, ever, I which knew is, it. Which means... Uh, what what the ending in that sentence the end of that sentence is, which means that it lives everywhere, and we all often talk about how like, where, where is this like open ocean animal found everywhere on Earth? Yeah, it's a op- that's an open ocean animal thing. Like reef um, animals tend to like live in warmer waters, so it's like that's usually like the Caribbean or Southeast Asia. But um, yeah, the uh, what is it? Um, pale geo- pale geic or, or I can't pelagic 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 animals. They tend to be to go everywhere, like Johnny Cash, mm-hmm. like Johnny and Cash, whales. Even though he only went to uh, North America. Their habitat um, Danas are found in oceans worldwide and are believed to live at depths of around three thousand feet. They're they're hard to spot because of their living depth. Um, it is a top predator in its environment. Um, they are listed as least concern, but how would you even know <laughs> if you, they're not well studied and you don't see them very often and it's very hard to see them? How would you even know? You're just like, they must be fine I, down there. <laughs> I get I'm not concerned about it. Uh, no one has sent up a complaint to HR yet. Like the yeah. like those pandas. Um, the they are shrouded in a ton of mystery, and much of what we know comes from specimens that have been you know washed up, or dredged up, or collected in research exp- expeditions. But their elusive nature continues to int- intrigue um, us, only us, and also. Scientists and oceanic enthusiasts and whoever owned that camera. <laughs> and then the two of us, and then that's it. Um, I have something else, but I think it might bleed into what you're going to talk about, so take it away. All right. The major fact for this one's called Someone's in the Kitchen with Dana. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is this descriptive of the major fact? No, I just was listening to that song recently because I love that song and it's it's just, you know, uh, I know all, all the words and it's on my iPod. No, it's... It's a good song for kids. It's a good song for kids. And also, I didn't know that, like, it's part of I've Been Working on the Railroad. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd never heard the... I'd never heard, like, the full thing until, like... One of the more recent videos my kids were watching was like, it finished. I've been working on the railroad and ends with uh, Dinah blow your horn and then goes into someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Um, oh, which was like, oh, I didn't know that was. I didn't know those two it were. It does connected. feel like those are two different songs, but I yeah. get, but I was just thinking that the um, the tune's the same. No, one's da 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 da, and then the other one's da 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 da. da. But it's like the same. Oh yeah. It, Is it same notes, same they, key? They they float they flow together, uh, and they are thema- like, thematically like Abbey linked. Road. Like Abbey Road. Um. <laughs> so the Dana octopus squid has, uh, it, you know, for the most part, looks like a normal squid, but it possesses some unique 
photophores that are distributed across his body. So living so far down in the depths where light or very little light reaches, um, a lot of animals have bioluminescence. We've talked about this for, for several different animals that live down there. Um, it is a great way to um, communicate, to find food, to lure food, to um, dazzle opponents or attract mates. And uh, it's, it's the same situation with the Dana octopus squid. Uh, these photophores are special light-producing organs. Um, and, oh, and it can also uh, aid in camouflage. But the Dana octopus squid has particularly prominent photophores. It's a triple triple P threat. Um, and most of them are located along the arms and mantle. So um, uh, they're just kind of lined like a 747 windows. Um, but the most obvious photophores are on these two stubby little arms that it has. Um, so for most photophores throughout the animal kingdom, and most of these are found at the bottom of the ocean, um, they're just like a few fractions of an inch long. They're really, really tiny. But the photophores on the, uh, on the Dana octopus squid are the size of a lemon each. So they're huge, like this size flashlights. It's essentially a flashlight. Yeah, it's like a big, just fist-sized bulb of light at the end of their... Technically, it's bigger than a flashlight. Yes. Unless you have a very large flashlight. Like one of those big halogens. Um, And not only do they have these big, like, glowing eyeball things, they also have an eyelid for those. So these things are always glowing... Um, and they have like this shutter that they close over it when they don't want it to be visible, which is, it's very helpful to turn off the light when you don't want to be seen. Um, so just two glowing eyeballs and a big eyelid that closes over it. So if you've ever played a Resident Evil game, you have most likely emptied entire magazines into something that looks like this. (laughs) multiple times because that's just that's just how those games work out like a you you're, you you see a guy and you're like hey i'm gonna get you and then he turns into a giant tentacle monster with a bunch of big eyeballs on it and you just i guess i shoot the eyeballs and then that's what you do um so these are the largest photophores in the animal kingdom by a by a country mile by a by an oceanic nautical mile um and that's kind of what lands it on this list. They emit this blue-green bioluminescent light, um, and the squid can actually control both its intensity and its duration. Um, so that gives it a lot of, you know, little levers to pull for um, uh, communication uh, or attracting mates um, or camouflage. Um, and. They also use this as an identification tool. So, like your arrangement, um, or the the like, you you can flash a certain signal and say like, "Hi, you know, I'm I'm Ted. This is Ted in the darkness, you SLS. know, four feet away from you." Uh, and then the other one can say, "Hi, Kai. This is S- Sasha." <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know what squid call each other. This is Harry and Sally, um, uh, and so they, yeah, they can they can recognize each other and they can recognize um, their mates as well. And when they're startled, they will often flash these lights quickly. And um, researchers have been a little stumped on why they do this and in the situation where the, that happened a month ago where the squid attacked a camera it flashed its lights like bright um before attacking so it'll flash before attacking it'll flash before swimming away um 
the the general like conjecture for this is that it is to blind whatever is there because most animals that live down there are either blind or if they um if uh if they do rely on sight at all they have really really large and sensitive eyes so flashing a light out of just pitch blackness um might really confuse uh predators although they found that it doesn't their their main prey is like sperm whales which doesn't they don't seem they didn't seem predator. to d- deter them from oh sorry predator their main predator is sperm whales and that didn't seem to deter what? sperm whales from um from chowing down um but it might you know stun a prey animal it's like oh what's that bright light and then suddenly there's a beak chomping down on you have, have we talked about how how unner- yeah we have with the giant squid episode how unnerving it is that squid and octopus have beaks that's mm-hmm. that's so weird that they have just parrot beaks down and there. And they're hidden. So it's like it has to reveal something that it should not have. <laughs> like, yeah. Check out this. No. <laughs> That's wrong. It's just like, yeah, what if it what if just like all these all this skin unfolded and it was just a pair of like pearly white human teeth? And just be like, ah, be no. Worse? No, 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 no. I, I'm thinking it should be a sarlacc kind yeah. of mouth. Like uh like the um like the kraken. Although the kraken has a has a beak, but it also has a sarlacc mouth. The the Pirates of the Caribbean kraken. Um, yeah, just really really unnerving. Anyway, um, so the problem with this squid, as you mentioned, is that it has not been really well documented or observed. Most of what we know about them comes from the stomach contents of sperm whales that were hunted in the seventies. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not great when it comes to, to live specimen, um, observation, uh, which is the case for a lot of animals that live down there. We have, I I have a few animals on, um, our list that are cool that we have because humanity has one, literally one picture of them. (laughs) And it's like, that's, that was a cool picture. We know nothing, so I'm. We can't really do the episode. <laughs> um. So yeah, James Cameron, get on that. Take get take more pictures of the of the deep, please. Yeah. Um, and then that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, that was the <clears throat> Dana Octopus Squid. So for you out there in Podcastia. Get down to a cozy death. Turn on your brights and blind your foes like the Dana Octopus Squid here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> there's a picture and it looks like um it's holding its lights out in front of it and it looks like headlights <laughs>